Hi, Kit here. We're going to do 45 minutes of stretching and 15 minutes of guided relaxation at the end. So please join me for this beginner's class. The only equipment you'll need is something like this, um, which we call a bolster, where we come from. I'm not sure what they call them where you are. Okay, so we're going to run through the five spinal movements. That, that also includes a little piriformis exercise. And we're going to do what the Orientals call the three necks of the body, wrists, ankles and this neck here and that should be a nice rounded general sort of class. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is a really lovely stretch for the middle and upper back. So I'm going to reach my hands around behind my knees like this and then watch I let the lower back slump fully like this and I'm wriggling myself backwards by moving my heels in small movements towards me and then and this is the big one I simply hang off my arms like this let your arms relax apart from your hand holding your wrist and let everything open up in your middle and upper back and you can help that by directing your breathing so just imagine someone has their hand in the middle of your back I don't know whether you'll be able to see this on camera and you breathe in such a way, like that, that the hand moves away from me. So I'm trying to breathe into that middle and upper back. Oh, when you do that, it just makes the sensation so much stronger. Move the heels back a little bit closer towards me. And now I'm going to just very gently while keeping the slump on, I'm going to very gently try to pull my face a tiny bit towards my thighs like this. If I exaggerate it and just repeat it, watch, the bottom part of my back doesn't move, but the upper and middle does. And that really brings on a lovely sensation. You can add a little rotation. I'm lifting up this heel and pushing the leg away from me slightly and you can see that it moves my left shoulder forward. Put the foot back in the start position and do the other side. Oh, wonderful. Slump once more, relax completely, hang off your arms, and then gently pull the face towards the thighs once more. Hmm, lovely. And then while we're in this position, I'm going to turn away from you like this, sit up straight, and gently twist myself around like this. If you need to, you can hold the side of your knee like this, if that makes it a bit easier to do. Come around to the middle position, put my arm on this side of the knee or hold it like this, lift my chest up and use both arms to twist myself around. Sit up a bit straighter, breathe in and watch. Lift the chest up a bit more. And go back to the first side once more and I just want to show you what lifting the chest does when you're in the end position. Let's say I was something like this on your side. When I lift the chest up, see how it straightens the middle and the upper back and that means when you apply the rotation, mm, that feels lovely, when you apply the rotation it just distributes it, that twist along more of the spine. If you're slumped um, or your spine is in some other shape but as straight as you can hold it, you'll find that one part will be stretched more. And you can use that too if you want to get a stretch in a particular place. But we're doing a general class today. Ah. So a very gentle back bend now. You'll notice that I've got my elbows under my shoulders. I've let my tummy sink to the floor. I'm going to sink down between my shoulders like this and move round a little bit like this. And then, to bring on a bit more of a stretch if you need it, press 
the elbows away from you, which will lift your chest and head away from the floor a bit. And then gently pull your elbows back to you while lifting your ribs up and then let the ribs settle down on the floor again. And you can probably see that's increased the bend in the back. And I always like to add a little twisting motion. I pretend I've got a tail and I'm looking around to see whether it's still attached, and it is. And same on this side. I always try to look at the opposite heel. And then press up a little bit more and then let your tummy sink into the ground. Press a little bit more. So I'm pressing my elbow straight down onto the floor. I pull the elbows back to me. Friction holds them in place. And then let the tummy relax completely. That's lovely. Now something, if you do have a bolster as I do, you can bring it into the set like this. And you can do the same elbow back bend, but this time with the elbows considerably higher. And as you can probably see, that increases the curve backwards in the back. And I'll turn around to this side this time. And the other side. Bring myself a tiny bit closer to the bolster. Let my stomach sink into the ground and watch I press my shoulders back very gently just by pressing my elbows into the bolster. That feels absolutely marvellous. And then when you're in the position, what you think is your final position, just watch what I'm going to do now. I let the tummy go completely soft and all of a sudden you can see that the body sinks a bit further into the floor and in so doing increases the back bend. That feels very nice today. Mm. And to come out, we have a variety of ways of doing this. I'm just going to push myself out of it today like this. And then, to stretch my lower back out a little bit, move the bolster away, and simply let myself drape down over my thighs like this. Now I'm breathing into this area of the back. So you probably won't be able to see this on camera, but I'm pretending that someone has their hand on my back, lightly resting on my back. Oh, and I breathe into that hand, trying to move the hand further away from me. Oh, it feels absolutely wonderful. Mm. Okay, so now we will do a few little hip movements which we always include with the daily movements for various reasons. Now some of you may have seen Olivia's video where she lets this hip come up off the ground and if that feels a bit more comfortable for you and allows you to do the pose, then by all means do that. But when I do it, I let this foot come off the ground, I wriggle the hips backwards and forwards and watch I sit up on my bottom bones like this and even that position there just the sitting up you can probably see it rolls the pelvis forward and that already starts to stretch in here so today I'm going to leave this hip on the ground or as close as I can to it pull the leg across the body like this and then watch take a breath in slump hold the knee like so lift my chest up and try and pull the knee more underneath the shoulder which has the effect of increasing the stretch here quite dramatically. I'm also getting a rather nice stretch at the back of the shoulder blade too as that shoulder moves forward. Mm. Now I'm breathing into the inside of the hip. <sighs> at least three breaths in that position. Mm, very nice. Now I'll turn around and do the other side. I expect to be a bit tighter on this side today, so I'll show you an alternative way of bringing that knee across the body. 
Once more, move from side to side. I'm trying to keep this hip pressed down on the ground and without moving anything else, I'm going to pull the knee this way. Yes, it's very tight today. Sit up straight, that brings the stretch on immediately. I'm going to add a little contraction here, which is I'm pressing this knee towards you. Three, two, one, stop. Sit up again. Mm. When you're stretching on your own like this, you will feel the natural inclination is to let your awareness go deep within the body as everything quietens down. And what happens in the process is you think about breathing into the inside of the hip. You become aware of all of the other sensations that are happening at the same time. For example, the pressure of my knee inside the forearm, the stretch across the upper back. Breathe deeply three times. Oh, it feels really, really nice. Oh. And while I'm here, I'm just going to do a few little hip movements. So I've got this foot closest to the body and this foot on the ground. And we're just going to do some very gentle movements like this. And when you do the movements towards the legs, try to keep the other hip on the ground. You won't be able to, you'll feel it un unweight slightly. And then a little movement towards the center like this. And I'll turn side on in a second to show you on the other side that when I do this, the bottom stays firmly pressed on the floor. And then this side, this movement's a bit restricted today. Notice is that I'm not forcing anything, I'm just exploring and using a tiny amount of my upper body weight to give me a lower back stretch here. So let me turn side on. Change the legs over. And Very nice. Stiffer on this side, but always different left to right, and you'll find that the pattern of tightness will change as you change the legs over. Now, this is what the movement that I was talking about before. I've straightened this part of my back, and I'm moving forward without letting my back bend. You don't have to be fanatic about this. The reason for suggesting that you hold the spine straight is that as far as possible we're trying to feel the movement in the hips. So if you watch what I'm going to hold the front of my shins here like this, watch this. You can duplicate that movement just by arching the lower back backwards and rolling the top of the pelvis forwards like this. So that and this movement do much the same thing. I'll go one more to this side. It's lovely. And one more to this side. And that's enough for that. And that moves us naturally into the next movement where we're going to start exploring the ankles. Now I haven't got my bottom on the ground, um, but you can have your bottom on the ground if you want to just by leaning weight on this hip like this. But because I'm just seeing what the body is like today, I'm just going to put a small amount of weight on this hip and then watch gently lean back like this so that all of the instep is stretched. Now I'm stretching the toes. And when we do this, now we're stretching the ankles in the other direction. 
and I can make that a bit stronger, I move this hand behind me like this, and I'm using this forearm to press this knee forward like this, and you can probably see that the knee is traveling well in front of the toes. Oh, that's nice. I'll turn around and do the other side. Now when you fold the leg like this, it all depends on the size of your calf muscles, but you can take any tension out of the knee by just rolling the calf muscle out of the way like that. And you see that when I bring the foot in close to my body like this, there's a good two inches of the calf muscle outside the leg. And the, the, the net result of that is that there's absolutely no sensation in the knee whatsoever. So I'm sinking back onto my hands like this. And my insteps are a bit tight today because I've been doing a bit of running lately. So I just let the foot relax completely and then lift the knee up slightly. And I'm going to lean towards you, lean towards the camera like this. And that way I can very finely calibrate the amount of extension force on my instep. Oh, that's nice. Lean a bit further back, pull the knee off the floor and then lean a bit of weight towards you. Oh, that's lovely. Lean away to come out. Change the position like this. I've got this other hand behind me to force myself forward gently. I'm making sure that the knee is directly over the forefoot like this and then watch I press that knee forward. I'm also moving the knee across towards the big toe side of the foot and then towards the little toe side of the foot deliberately because that changes the effect back here in the ankle always. So let's say we've done enough there. Now I'm going to move myself into one of my absolute all-time favourite positions, which is squatting on the ball of the feet like this. I come up as high as I can on the ball of the feet and we're trying to get the toes to move at least 90 degrees in relation to the foot, so something like this. And Olivia and I have been talking about balancing exercises a bit lately. And so while you're here, try balancing in this position. Come up as high as you can on the balls of your feet like this. The higher you come up, the harder it is to balance. And then let the heel go as close to the floor as you can. And then watch like this. And now come down into a squat position. When we come down into a squat position like this, as a stretch, it's a stretch for soleus. It's also a stretch for the ankle, as you can probably see. But also, because my shoulders are well forward of my hips, it's actually a stretch for the lower back. And I like that sensation very much. And then eventually, Rest back onto the floor like this, and now I can feel much more of a soleus stretch in here. One of the great virtues of the full squat position. I'm going to change my position now until my feet are a bit wider apart like this, and then move. I'm moving this knee out, and you can also move it in a little bit like this. Move this knee out and in a little bit like this. And generally just move around. And that includes coming up onto the balls of the feet. You might care to try this. Bring one knee down. Try not to use your hands. And all of these are just absolutely marvellous stretches for the whole of the feet. That's what I like about it. And we've noticed, Olivia and I have noticed many times that as people get older, it's ankle flexibility that they lose the first. 
So we might come back to that, we'll see. The next thing I want to do is just a little bit of work with the wrists. So let's see, I'll turn side on, so you can see what I'm doing. Turn your arms like this. And to bring on the stretch, firstly, let your shoulders come up around your ears as your body's weight sinks in between them. Check to see that your tummy is completely soft. And then watch, just gently move the hips back. Now I'm going to do a few little movements today because I'm surprisingly stiff in this direction today. I'm going to move the shoulders in circles. Oh, that is lovely. You can add a tiny contraction here too by pressing the fingers into the floor as the just gently, as though you were trying to straighten your wrists. Stop. Let everything go soft. And on a breath out, let the shoulders come back behind the wrists like this. Oh, that's lovely. To come out of the stretch, push the shoulders in front of the wrists like this. And then gently, well this, this floor that we're working on here is firm, but it's not um, as hard as a, a wooden floor, obviously. And so it's actually very comfortable for us to do this kind of movement on. Now what I'm doing is straightening my elbows and then watch turning the inside of the elbows to the front and then very cautiously leaving the back of the wrist on the floor, letting my weight come backwards. Keep the elbows straight and try to let the forearms and the wrists in particular relax completely. You can try pressing the back of the fingers into the floor very gently, just for a few seconds. Re-straightening the elbows, returning and take a breath in. Let your tummy go completely soft on a breath out. Take another breath in and bring the hips back. That increases the stretch considerably. Always hold that final position for at least a few breaths in and out so that you know you own it that you're not just forcing yourself into a strong position. The other test is, you have to be ruthless with yourself here when you ask yourself this question, is my tummy completely relaxed? And mine is, press the hips forward like this, turn the hands over, oh, beautiful. Now I'm going to sit like this for a moment on my legs because I can sit like this for a while while we just very gently stretch the fingers for a bit. But if you find that you need to sit on something or your bolster should be here, so by all means sit on that. All I'm doing is pressing the little finger back. So I've got my index finger on the base of the little finger like this. Press the index finger back. Press the tip of the, I should say press the little finger back. Press the tip of the little finger against the thumb and watch let everything go soft and take the finger further into extension. Now that's a lot of words, but you can see what I'm doing. Press, re-stretch, press, re-stretch, press, re-stretch, and then turn the hand over like this. Now this, when you pull the finger back this time, you'll see, I turn side on to you, you'll see that the wrist is involved in the movement now too, and this makes it considerably stronger. So you can repeat the little contractions, press, re-stretch. Pull enough tension on that finger so that you can feel everything through here and through the hand as well. Like so, move slowly of course. Press the finger away from you into the other hand. 
soft and oh that's lovely try twisting around a little, little bit too to see where that changes it doesn't with me pull gently press and when I say press I it's it's as though I'm just just pressing with that finger against the other hand it's the tiniest amount you don't need much at all you'll feel this there's always a temptation to favor the really big stretches the big sensation stretches but actually these little things are just as important they don't require any effort and they can be done anywhere anytime I developed these when I was traveling by train in Japan all those years ago the thumb press stretch turn the hand away from you press stretch mm, marvelous press we'll do we'll combine the two movements on this hand oh. Oh. now this time I'm pressing the elbow straight and pushing the shoulder towards you to bring on the stretch it doesn't seem to have any difference, major difference in effects whether you're pushing the shoulder forward or whether you're pulling the finger back so try both, see which works for you and the thumb again, like this re-stretch, turn the hand away pull the thumb back, press, re-stretch ah, lovely and now just for a little change of pace every time we do any exercise session on the floor we always do something for the hip flexors and something for the hamstrings so I'm going to do that now now a few detailed things here I'm also continuing to stretch my hands I don't know whether you've noticed that but I've got my thumbs and fingers spread like this and so as I get into this position here to stretch my hip flexors, I'm still going with the hands. Now I'll go down onto the floor and I will use my arms in a pulling back towards my knee, back legs, knee movement to do this. Because friction's holding everything in place, when I pull my hands back to me, the effect is to pull the hips forward. So I'm just doing this a couple of times. You'll notice I'm wriggling around too. Today, it's actually the line on the inside of the back leg's knee, which is tight. So if, if this is straight ahead, I'm now on the inside of my knee and I once again pull the hands forward, oh, or back, I should say, to bring the hips forward. So that's a little bit of a stretch for the hip flex on the back leg and I'll just show you what that looks like on the other side. The hand position here is optional. I think I'm a bit looser on this side today, I'm not sure. But this is what I mean by this is the middle position. This is the outside of the knee position. There's no extra resistance there. But this one, the inside of the knee, this is the big one today. Now I can tell you, because I've done this exercise so many times, it's actually different every day. And so my strong recommendation is to feel what's actually happening. Don't anticipate anything. And on this side, for some reason, I feel like doing some little pulsing movements, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, now I'll go back to the first side. Now this time, Let's add a little hamstring stretch to it as well. I'm creeping this foot forward because my hamstrings are reasonably loose and I need to have the knee open about this far to start to get any sensation there. I'll go on my knuckles this time. I'm squaring my hips up. Oh, it's lovely. And now watch. I'm going to drop my this shoulder down onto this leg here. Ah. Oh. And what I'm doing is I'm straightening this leg by pushing the foot away from me. But 
the heel is stuck on the floor, so all that happens is the hips go back and this becomes an absolutely wonderful little hamstring stretch. You can do some pulsing movements. You can twist around a bit and see if that changes it. And we'll do a contraction too in a moment. Oh, that's lovely. So in this position here now, push both hips back, reach around and hold this foot. Ah, oh, <laughs> that brings it on. When you fold up that back leg's knee, you suddenly realize where most of the tension is in your body. We'll come back to that. Oh, that's loosened everything off. So I'll show you, I'll still face in the same direction so you can see all the movements. Oh. So first thing we did, we dropped the shoulder down onto this knee, move the knee forward a bit. Let me just make this point. If you're not very flexible in the hamstrings, then have the knee underneath the foot and you can still bring on a hamstring stretch. You'll just need to move the hips back a bit further, that's all, like this. But if you're a bit more flexible, then creep the foot forward like this. That puts more tension into the whole system. And this time, oh, it actually changes the location of the stretch too. It's more on the inner hamstring and more towards this end of it rather than being up underneath the bottom muscle. So there's no right or wrong in these things. It's where you need to feel it today to get a good effect. Push yourself back. Flip the leg up like this, hold it, oh. and the immediate increase in the depth that you get just from stretching your quads is remarkable. I will repeat that on both sides. I'm pushing myself backwards as well to open out this angle here and doing both tightens up the whole thing. And now watch, just watch my hips here. If you cheat, your hips will be coming back like this. But if you want to tighten the pose up and to do it more strictly, then bring the back leg's hip forward like this and then slide yourself back a little bit forward. And now I've got equal tension in hamstrings and in the top of the back leg. Oh, very nice. I'll do the same on the other side. Bring the back leg hip forward. I'm also shifting my weight sideways because today that's also changing it. <sighs> Little hamstring stretch. <sighs> that's beautiful. Hmm. <sighs> The pleasure that I get from stretching is something that it's not easy for me to put into words, but I think you can see the smile on my face. Hmm, it's a very nice thing. Okay, I'll turn side on. We'll finish off with a few simple neck exercises. <sighs> oh look, I'm sitting on my legs, but if you want to sit cross-legged or any way you sit is fine for this, and I may even change my position. I'm taking the head forward. I reach the fingers up, let my back slump, and very gently let some of the weight of my arms, and when I say some, it's probably only 15 or 20 percent. And then something, a form point here. I've shown this in class many times and what I see a lot of people do is they will do 
this movement. That is not what I'm doing. Just watch, the lower back goes backwards and if you watch carefully, my shoulders go straight down when I do the movement. That's what you want. Add a little rotation like this. I'll come back and do that first side again. Add the little rotation. Oh, lovely. And to come out of that position, put your fingers on your forehead like this. Ah. Oh. Watch shoulders forward. Oh. Back. Most important. Down. And then shrug. Shrug. And watch. Turn. Oh, turn. Add other movements as you do that. And I'll turn to face you now. I'll change my legs over as well. Now notice, because I was sitting, I'm sitting cross-legged, my arms are not any use to me. So, so we go back to the sitting on the legs position like this, and we can do something else. We can hold the front of the shins here like this, and now watch, watch this shoulder. I lean to the side, and that pulls that shoulder down. Gently reach up like this, take the head to the side, and the first stretch that I can increase is simply by leaning to the side more and I feel that right in that place that everyone wants to get massaged. And the second thing I can do is I can gently press the head here back to the start position and then very carefully add a little bit more neck lateral flexion like this. Oh, beautiful. Lift up. Change the legs over a little bit. Do the other side. Oh. Notice I'm moving this knee more out to the side, that's so I don't have a balance. Lean away from the held shin. Oh, that's right in the right spot. Notice I dropped my head forward slightly too. That's because this particular line today was extremely tight. That's got into it. And pull the shoulder down more by leaning a bit more. Oh, lovely. Open the mouth wide. Take the head back. Close the teeth. Incline slightly from one side to the other and then reach the fingers and always finish off that movement like this. Mm, lovely sensation. I want to go back, I feel like, with everything that we've done, I want to go back to the very first exercise we did today. Just a very gentle lateral flexion. How will you do this today? Oh. Oh, it's really nice. So what I'm doing is I'm letting this hip here drop down. In fact, we could even try it like this. Oh. And then lean to this side. So we're doing lateral flexion of the neck and you can probably see my spine is bent to the side as well. Oh, that feels lovely. Change over to the other side. Oh, yes. Anytime you do anything to the side, of course, 
You can use the muscles under the arms to do this, just watch. Pull the shoulder down and that increases the sensation in the neck hugely. Oh, that's lovely. And then to finish off this little sequence, we will simply do a head turning action. So I'm sitting up straight. Take your head around as far as you can until it stops. Put a hand in your tummy, breathe in. Let the tummy go completely soft. Take another breath in. And turn the head further. And take another breath in. Try to keep the shoulder you're turning to still and turn the head further. You'll find it will go further every time without fail. Shrug, roll, sit up straight and go to the first position, slightly less in the range of movement for me today on this side. Take a breath in. Let the tummy go completely soft. Take another breath in. And turn the head further in this direction. Try to keep the shoulder still. One more. Breathe in. Tummy go soft. And Oh, that's much better. Tilt, explore, and always come back to this first side. Now watch this. It goes straight back to that third position, and so will this. Uh, shrug, shrug, roll. Ah. Uh. Okay, well that's all we're going to do on the stretching side for today. Um, so we'll give you a moment to set up. We're going to do a lying relaxation now to take us through to the hour. So I'm simply going to pull my bolster into position. This is a very comfortable way for me to sit while I'm doing this and I'd like you please to lie on the floor, put something underneath the back of your knees if you need to. And what we're hoping for is that the lower back will relax onto the floor completely in time and also this curve at the back of the neck we'll be giving you some little cues to think about how to do this and how to feel this. But in time, we want the whole of the spine to be as flat on the floor as possible without any kind of effort at all. Okay, the practice begins. Lie down and close your eyes. Take in a deep breath. And as you breathe out, make a ah sound. It should be the sound of the pleasure of simply letting go and relaxing. And again, ah. And don't be afraid to vocalize this. Being relaxed, or let's say learning how to be relaxed, is just a habit. It's just a habit that we don't have yet, that's all. And the more you can reinforce these things by simple little things like making a long ah sound three times in all when you first lie down on the floor it will only help. Now for a moment, do nothing. Simply feel your body lying on the floor. Listen to all the sounds around us. The internal combustion engine is a loved object in Greenwell Point. And we cannot do any of these practices without hearing them. So just like noises which might irritate you at night time, we have to learn to let the sounds come in and not disturb us at all. And so when Olivia and I are doing our practices and we hear a chainsaw outside, you can just see a little smile come across the face. Yep, it's that sound. But the big difference is that because we're relaxed, the sound doesn't disturb you. It doesn't irritate you. 
you just are aware of the sound. Now we'll move the awareness around the body using a convention called the meeting points, which is simply just where you can feel the different parts of the body that I will mention resting on the floor. So move your awareness to your left heel and feel the left heel resting on the floor. And you ask yourself, is the left heel completely comfortable? If you're not sure, just roll the leg in and out a tiny amount, and that'll move the weight from the middle of the heel to the inside and then the outside, and then Gently draw the ball of the left foot up towards the left knee, just a tiny, tiny amount, a centimeter. And also make these movements slower than you would habitually do when you hear an instruction like that. And you'll be amazed to find that the more slowly you can move the foot, the stronger the sensations become. And that's what we want. We want the strongest sensations with the least amount of effort and then ask yourself, how does the left heel feel? And you become aware that it's resting on the floor more comfortably now. And so, across to the right heel. Is the right heel completely comfortable? If you're not sure, use those same little rolling movements side to side or gently draw the ball of the foot up towards the knee and you'll feel that will stretch the calf muscle at the back of that right leg, gently. Take a breath in and let the foot move to wherever requires the least amount of effort to hold it there. And feel the right heel again and become aware that it's resting more comfortably on the floor. Now move your awareness to your left hip where you feel the left hip resting on the floor. And now the right hip, feel where the right hip is resting on the floor. Very gently squeeze both bottom muscles and you'll feel the hips lift up a tiny bit. Take a breath in and on a breath out, let that squeezing effort go completely and feel your hips moving onto the floor with less tension, more comfort. The left and right hips feel more relaxed now. Now move your awareness to where your left shoulder and arm rest on the floor. Very, very gently take some of the weight of the left shoulder off the floor and then take a breath in and as you breathe out, let the whole shoulder rest more comfortably on the floor. All of us are holding tension in our body that we are simply not aware of and making little movements like this and letting the shoulder go down onto the floor a second time with your awareness in it, you can feel, ah, everything's just gone a bit softer. That's the feeling you're looking for. And now the right shoulder. Ask yourself, 
Is it completely comfortable? Very gently take some of the weight of the right shoulder off the floor, just a few percent. Take a breath in while holding it. And then as you breathe out, let the right shoulder rest on the floor again and become aware of the immense weight of the right arm and the right shoulder as you go through this exercise and how you can feel that the right shoulder and the right arm are resting more comfortably on the floor now. The right shoulder and the right arm are simply more relaxed. Now move your awareness back down the spine into your lower back and ask yourself, during this short exercise, is my lower back closer to the floor now? And then move the awareness up the spine to the back of the neck and you might find that you need to bring your chin a small amount into your chest because the back of your neck now wants to lengthen onto the floor. Take a moment to feel that. And then ask yourself, is my neck completely relaxed? If you're not sure, very gently roll the head slowly left and right and maybe bring the chin in a bit or it might need to go the other way but find a position where the whole of your neck feels as relaxed as possible take in a breath and as you breathe out feel the sensation of the body letting go of another little bit of tension Now, imagine you are above yourself looking down onto your face and you notice how relaxed your face looks. Very gently lift your eyebrows a tiny amount and then let those muscles relax. Very gently Push the lips away a tiny amount from the teeth and then let those muscles relax. Check to see that you've got a small space between the upper and lower jaw. Feel your face relax with every breath out. See the lines in your face smoothing as tension leaves the body. Feel the weight of your eyes resting in the eye sockets. Feel your ears. Feel the muscles of your scalp. And notice in this short period of time your face looks even more relaxed now. Breathe and relax. Breathe and relax. Feel how the whole floor is supporting you perfectly without effort. For the next moment, do nothing at all. Simply experience the state of deep relaxation.
And now it's time to come back to our ordinary state of awareness. So to help us do this, take a breath in, a deliberately deep breath in, as you raise your arms up and out behind you. Reach the arms off the body. And as you breathe out, bring your arms back to your side. Repeat this two more times in your own time. And after the third time, slowly roll over onto your side. Take your time, there's no hurry. And sit up. The practice is over. <laughs>